Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I am sitting out here in the garage, starting to get some rods rigged up for the next event on Dale Hollow Lake. It'll be our third Bass Pro Tour event of the year. We're sitting okay in points. We're right on the Red Crest cutoff line. We're sitting inside of the uh, qualification line for next year. But we still need to put together some good tournaments and I'm excited to go to Dale Hollow Lake. I've never been there before. Uh, but I know it's a highland impoundment. It's got a bunch of smallmouth in it, a bunch of largemouth in it. Very good quality fish. Lots of good fish, supposedly, uh, to be caught in almost any different manner that you want. If you want to fish some shallow bushes, you're going to be able to do it because right now the water level is rising. Uh, and at the same time, if you want to go fish really clear water down by the dam for smallmouth, you're going to be able to do that too. So it is one of those events where I feel like I have every rod I own rigged up, which is frustrating to a point, but at the same time, it's kind of nice to have a little bit of everything rigged when I go to these events. But I do feel like, based on the little bit that I know about the lake, the time of year, that we're going to probably be in another forward-facing sonar event. I think you're going to see the old Demiki rig and the hover rig uh, come into play. I really do, because I, I I was thinking for a while there might be a big influx of fish that are going shallow. The reality is the lake is on the rise, but we got a pretty good cold front coming through this week, and it's not going to warm up all that much next week. So I think your water temps are still probably going to be right around 60 degrees. Uh, you may have some fish that are pulling up the spawn. You probably have the majority of fish that are holding back just a little bit. And because of that, they're probably going to be uh, chasing bait fish suspended off the banks a little bit because remember these highland impoundments for the most part are very vertical lakes um <clears throat> the the other cool thing with dale hollow is there's a lot of deep grass a lot of milfoil and hydrilla i don't know how well that's grown up as of right now i don't know if that dies off over the winter and then grows up over the summer but i expect there to be some good grass fishing so again that opens up a lot of different opportunities but i wanted to go through some of the different baits that i think could be really good players in this event kind of more so what i'm looking to throw i will have like i said i'm gonna have another probably dozen to 20 rods rigged up with different techniques like some deep diving crankbaits some carolina rigs things that i if i don't have to throw i don't really want to throw in this situation uh but i still will probably have them rigged up Today's video is brought to you by the deep dive app which will help you select the best fishing places in the lake with features like the lake level, the current flow, the top baits tool, which will help you select the best baits for certain locations throughout the lake. Whether that's a clear water, stained water, dirty water, it'll choose the best bait for that location, provide you with all the information like what structure, what retrieve, different reel, all of the information that you need to catch the fish. This is in the app. The cool part about this app though, is it's not just based on areas. It does provide you with specific tournament winning data that has been collected to help you figure out your best choices for baits and locations for whatever region of the lake it is that you wanna fish. On top of that, not only does the app provide you with best locations, it gives you water clarity as well. So maybe you're on a lake like Lake follow, where there is a bunch of different water clarity located throughout the entire lake. This will help you identify the clearest portions as well as the dirtiest portions of the lake. Plus the deep dive app has now added the wind effect map, which is gonna take all of the different wind conditions for the past couple of days and show you what banks on the lake are being hit the hardest. They also have inflow points that show you different places throughout the lake where your water is being flushed into the lake through different ditches and creeks and rivers, providing you with a high percentage places to fish and letting you know what parts of the lake are gonna be the best areas after a rain. Check out the Deep Dive app to help you become a better angler. Okay, so let's talk about some of the baits that I think are going to be major players. Now, first and foremost, I know Dale Hollow is a very, very good jerkbait lake. Uh, so I will probably have two jerkbaits rigged up. This is the Berkeley Stunna, the regular version. I'll probably have the 112 Plus one rigged up as well. 
in a couple of different colors. You know, I do expect there to be some different water clarity variations depending on the part of the lake you're on. So I'll have one, uh, this guy right here, which is more of your standard uh, opaque colored shad color. And then I'll probably have the shad fillet, which is a translucent bait with a little bit of chartreuse for the clear water situations. Uh, so I think a jerk bait is gonna be a major player. I really do. I think you're going to also see, like I was talking about, your Demiki rig and your mid strolling come into play. So this is a tush, a core tackle tush jig head, the quarter ounce, just the two hot hook that I've got paired up here with a raid uh, hover roller, I believe is or roller. I can't think of the name. It's the hover roller, I think is what it's called. But so I'm going to have a couple of baits rigged up for the Demiki uh, along the same lines. I'll have the hover rig, which is somewhere here rigged up. So I'll have a hover rig too for some of those shallower fish. Uh, I do think a lot of those fish are probably going to be closer to the bank. I don't know that they're necessarily going to be roaming out in the middle of the lake. I think you're going to see a lot of fish that are setting up around the spawning ground. So in front of some of the little side pockets in front of some of the spawning flats. And because of that, they're going to be shallower than they may have been during the winter months. And that's where the hover rig is going to really come into play. So I've got just the four inch shad impact by Kitech on that one. Uh, another bait that you haven't really seen me throw this year much, but I do think could be a very good player here is the Berkeley finisher. Uh, so this is kind of your hybrid between a jerk bait and a slash bait. Uh, I've done videos on this. I love this thing. I really do, but I haven't really been able to make it play in the first couple tournaments. On Toledo Bend, I did catch a couple of fish in practice on it. The problem was I lost three of them, if I recall correctly, just because of all the sanding timber. Just didn't really, it, it just didn't work right. Uh, I did throw it uh, a little bit, not a whole lot on Lay Lake, but because my practice was shortened based on some boat issues and me wanting to really fish up the river it just was not the ideal bait necessarily for that place either but I do think it could be absolute dynamite at Dale Hollow especially in that clear water end so we've got that rigged up uh, another bait that I think could be very good is just a spinner bait uh, so this is a this is a war eagle spinner bait in their sexy shad color that I have had great success on at Cumberland, Lake Cumberland, which is, I mean, it's, I don't know, a half hour from Dale Hollow. It's basically the same, same part of the country. And there are times on Cumberland where the spinnerbait bite is just ridiculously good. And I've seen that before. And if that happens at Dale Hollow, I could see that being another really good way to uh, have a very good tournament. So I've got the exact bait. Well, I don't know if it's the exact bait from that tournament, but it's the exact color and uh, spinner bait. Uh, another bait that I love to throw in your Highland impoundments right before the spawn is just a floating worm. This is the methylate floating worm by Zoom. Uh, it's their trick worm, I should say. And then I've just got a Fusion 19 EWG worm hook. I feel like it could be a very good player. I don't, I, I kind of feel like we're also going to have, like where the majority of the largemouth are going to be, it may be a little bit dirtier than where I like to throw the methylate, but I got to have it, got to try it. Because when it's on, it's really good. And when it's not on, it's probably not going to win a multi-fish derby, but uh I love throwing it. I, I, it's a fantastic way to fish and it's an entertaining way to fish because you get to watch the bait. So we've got that rigged up. I'll probably have a couple of different variations of little uh, of your tungsten jigs. So I'll probably have this guy, which is a Kitech casting jig, a tungsten one with a little three inch pit boss. I've got a little spotty by Picasso rigged up. On this one, a little quarter ounce. So I'll probably have a couple of different jigs. You know, it's just that Highland impoundment. You're talking about mostly rock and a little tungsten jig can generate a lot of bites. And you also have a lot of fish that are starting uh, to spawn or stage on some of that broken rock. Some of those little shelf rock type stair stepping shelves that can be where they spawn. So 
Uh, we're gonna have a jig on quite a bit. There's also probably gonna be a few laydowns. You might run into a few bushes in the water. I think we're gonna be a little short of the bushes uh, based on the lake being a few feet low still right now, but that could change. A little bit of rain might change and they are pulling it up. So maybe by the time we're there and the tournament starts, the fish could be in the bushes. So a jig is gonna be good for that. And then you gotta have a, uh, not a shallow running crank, but a crank that runs in that, I'll say 10 foot or less. And my finger is stuck on that hook right now. Uh, so I like some form of craw cranks. I'll probably have two or three of these rigged up. So this is the Berkeley Dime 6. So I'll have this guy rigged up. I'll probably have an old school wiggle wart in one of the craw patterns, whether it's phantom green or phantom brown. Uh, and then I'll probably start with that. And depending on how that goes, I may end up throwing a shad wrap. I had good lucks uh, on Highland Lakes with a shad wrap before, and I may end up throwing something like a rock crawler too, if that wiggle wart bites on. So that, for me, the crankbait is the type of thing that, you know, generally I start with one or two. And if it's on, I may have four or five in the tournament, but I'm gonna start probably with those couple. And then the last one is the old trusty swim jig. Uh, man, I do feel like the swim jig could bite could be on again. I think we're going to be a little bit, a, probably not in the woods enough, but if we do get some warm weather and the water does come up, what ends up happening on these Highland impoundments is you do end up getting a lot of debris that floats up, you know, whether it's like pine needles or little twigs and you get these little floating mats, uh, that kind of get stuck or in or around the bushes. A spinnerbait can be great in that situation, but sometimes you can't throw the spinnerbait because the, the blades will get fouled. That's when I'll pick up a swim jig and I'll fish it through the same areas. And in some instances, I'll actually add a blade to the back of the swim jig too, just to give that flash because those fish do really want to key in on, the, on that flashy kind of bait fish appearance. But this, I feel like this is the workhorse for me. Uh, man, I mean, there could be some other baits. Like I said, I know there's a good... Carolina rig bite on this lake. I do think, you know, depending on how the grass is, I think you could potentially get into a deeper crankbait bite. But I think for the most part, you're talking about more of your bait fish imitating baits for your forward facing sonar stuff. So your jerk bait, your Demiki rig, your hover rig. And then I think you're going to have uh, a shoreline related bite that's going to be more of your jig, your spinner bait, maybe that floating worm. And I think, I'm hoping. By tournament time, I'm going to be able to really narrow it down where I don't have 20 rods rigged and out on the deck. I also think you might see uh, like glide baits play. I think that that could potentially be a player too. Whether somebody wants to throw it in a multi-fish tournament or not is yet to be seen. I don't know that anyone has ever done well throwing a glide bait in a BPT event. I could be wrong on that. But I'm really hoping that uh, this pairs it down. I mean, I, I have full confidence that one of the baits that I've mentioned here uh, will be probably the winning technique. It's just a matter of finding those fish and being able to, to get to work and put them in the boat. So guys, thanks for watching. I will have uh, quite a bit of Dale Hollow footage coming out. Hopefully I'll have some uh, you know tournament videos. Hopefully I'll have some updates during the week. I do believe right now I fish on day Two. So that'll be Wednesday. So that means I'll probably be able to get a, a for sure, a recap video out uh, on Tuesday, which will be my off day. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate all your support. Let's have a good Dale Hollow event. I want to I want a top 10. That's what we're chasing in this one. I mean, we want to win them all. But right now, from a point standpoint, top 10 is really would really be a good thing. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I'm gonna get back to this. Well, uh, stay tuned. New video coming out tomorrow.